This is rental car number 99, and today I'm driving the 2018 Nissan Murano SL with all-wheel drive. I've actually rented quite a few Nissans in the last couple of months, and it's pretty rare that I get an SL trim level. This car actually MSRPs for about $42,000, and that includes an extra $1,400 to add the power panoramic moonroof, which uh, I enjoyed quite a bit. Anyway, there's a lot of stuff to talk about on the Murano, so let's jump in by popping the hood and taking a look at what's underneath. This is where you're going to find the 3.5-liter 24-valve V6 engine. This is Nissan's Xtronic CVT, continuously variable transmission, and it kicks out an impressive 260 horsepower. As I mentioned before, this one has intelligent all-wheel drive, and it gets some pretty decent gas mileage. You get 21 miles per gallon in the city, 28 on the highway with a 19-gallon fuel tank. Now, gas by me is about $2.80 a gallon. That means you can fill this thing up for about $53. And if you haven't noticed, that fuel cap is located on the driver's side of the vehicle. All right, so that's a lot of specs and stats. What's it actually like to drive this car? Well, uh, handling is good. Acceleration is good. Cabin noise is good. In fact, it's all so good that I, uh, well, I sort of forgot to film a bunch of me driving this car. So I don't have a lot of footage, but don't worry about it because performance on this vehicle is great. You won't be disappointed. I think it's actually exceptional considering this car is only about $41,000. Anyway, that's my super quick take on performance. Let's jump inside the vehicle so I can show you all the really interesting amenities that come with the Nissan Murano. Here's the key fob in the Murano. It's a Nissan standard key. You just have five buttons on the front, remote start, lock, unlock. This is the hatch release and then a panic button. There's nothing on the back. This is fairly light. I typically like my, um, my keys a little heavier than this, but uh, it feels like it's built out of nice quality materials. And because you have a key fob, it's a push button start. You can already see it. It's down here on the dash. It's just a small circular button. Let's give it a push and it'll start the car up. So now that we have the car on, let's go over the steering wheel setup really quickly. First off, this is pretty soft leather. It feels pretty nice in your hands. And you do have a number of buttons on the steering wheel. On the left-hand side, you have buttons to interact with the display in the gauge cluster. Uh, you also have volume rockers down here. Actually, this button right here with the OK written on it, this actually shifts some of the audio features in the center display over here. This is the touch screen. On the right hand side you have your cruise controls. Normally these are kind of boring but the uh, 2018 Murano has adaptive cruise control as an option. So basically that means if you throw it on cruise and you set the distance by pressing this button see that a little pop-up will uh, come up right up here on the uh, gauge cluster. Three lines means you're going to be the furthest away from the car, two a little bit closer, one really close. And essentially the car is going to keep you that distance from the car in front of you. So if you set cruise on at maybe 60 miles an hour, right, but the car in front of you is going 50, well the Murano is going to adapt the speed of the car automatically and shift uh, your speed down to 50 to match that car in front of you. It's actually kind of fun to play around with. Uh, so I didn't mention the gauge cluster, I want to show it to you right now two nice dials on the left and right side and you have a pretty big screen right here in the center with a lot of great information on it. I'll cycle through some of it. Right, you have the compass right here with the speedometer. You can see what uh, audio you're playing on the entertainment system. Navigation, additional information about the car. I've uh, recently reset the trip counter to try to get an accurate uh, guess, I'm going to say, of, of the miles per gallon on this vehicle. Right now we're getting about 31, which isn't bad. Uh, you also have a fuel economy indicator. You have all kinds of driving aids on this to help you park the car. And then tire pressure, warnings, and then the setting screens. There's actually a lot here that's kind of fun to play around with. All right, but let's shift our gaze over to the left. Down here, you're going to find your window controls right here. You also have your door locks and your mirror controls. Up top, you have the latch to open the door. You also have two memory seat buttons right here. Up on the dash, you have uh, buttons to adjust the brightness in the gauge cluster. There's also the trip release, which is kind of a weird spot, but hey, whatever. Uh, down below, you have some additional buttons. Uh, right here, you have the heated seat controls, traction control, and then the trunk release. And then further down, the releases for both the hood and the gas. And then all the way at the bottom, you'll see you have a manual 
push pedal parking brake. I actually like these a lot. Uh, I've had a lot of cars recently with electronic parking brakes, and uh, I think my preference now is to have a manual, especially the pedal version. Real quickly, side view mirrors are a nice, nice uh, size, but you do get blind side detection on this car. So as you're driving, if someone's in your blind spot, this little indicator right here is gonna glow orange to let you know that it's not a good time to turn. If you turn your turn signal on and there's someone in your blind spot, this is gonna blink at you and the car will also beep just to give you that extra warning that uh, you're not doing something particularly safe. And the same feature is also located on the uh, passenger mirror as well. Shifting your gaze upward a little bit. So we have a nice size sunglass holder, some pretty boring standard lights up here to illuminate the cabin. And then probably my favorite feature is this control right here because this opens up the moonroof. This thing is actually pretty large. You see it's still going back. You can also open it up pretty nicely. Just an added feature. I love having these, though, if I'm being completely honest, most of the time, while I'm actually driving on the highway, I keep them closed. But it's still fun to pop it open every once in a while. Below there, you also have a uh, rear view mirror. If you'll notice, you do have three different places where you can program garage door openers. You also have an automatic dimming feature right here. Below there is where things start to get a little bit interesting. Uh, hazard buttons up top. I don't know about you, but I've been using these more and more. I like to do the uh, Japanese style thing where you have it flash twice if someone is kind enough to let you merge into a lane or, or make a turn. Uh, down here, you have your screen. This is pretty large. It's a touch screen with a lot of functionality. It's a minute before four o'clock. Oh, there's the radio. That wasn't a good idea. Um, dedicated menu buttons on the bottom of the display. You also have uh, actual physical buttons on the right and the left side, which are nice because it makes it really easy to jump through uh, all the features. I'm not a huge fan of Nissan's setup. I think it's not quite as nice as Ford's, but, you know, this works fine. You do have kind of a dim display, at least in my opinion. I'd like to see some, some bigger, brighter colors to help you really see all of these different icons. Extra traffic wants it. Down here are your climate controls. I love that you have digital displays to tell you exactly what temperature the car is set at. These also kind of feel like they're made of glass, even though this is a nice quality plastic. And you have nice dials on the right and left side to adjust the temperature, and then a pretty easy set up to adjust the fan and all the different settings on the climate. So all in all, it's pretty nice. Down here you have the gear shift. Uh, a little bit clunky in my opinion, but it works fine. You also have sport shift capability, so when you're in drive, you can shift that gear shift over to the right, and then you can manually adjust the gears while you're on the fly. We talked about the push button start before. Over here, you have a USB port, an auxiliary out jack, and then a power port. Right, This kind of looks like an old-fashioned cigarette lighter, but this is plastic. So you will need an adapter if you're going to use this power port right here. A little bit further back, you have two cup holders. You also have a storage space right here that's perfect to stick a cell phone, if you like. And then down in here, you have the heated seat controls. I like these because not only do the seats heat up pretty quickly, um, but they have a nice click to them. Like they're made out of really nice materials, which I like. Over here you have the center armrest, which opens up to reveal a pretty big storage space. I like that there's a shelf right here, so you can organize things in here. Actually, two shelves if you look, for change and other odds and ends. And then you have a power port right here. Down in, you know, the storage area itself there's nothing really down there but it is pretty deep so i guess you can get a lot of stuff down in there if you uh if you like since we're looking at storage let's look over here glove box let's open it up it's pretty big it goes back a good ways you can see that owner's manual is tucked way back in there i'm not sure why we have two screws in here but uh, Hey, whatever. It's a rental car. And I don't know if you can see, but there's an additional shelf up here. So you really do have quite a bit of functionality in here. So that's kind of a nice feature to have. All right, that's pretty much everything in the front seats. So let's jump in the back to see what kind of things your passengers are going to get a chance to enjoy. All right, so the back seat is fairly comfortable, although I, I kind of feel like I'm sitting up. 
a little too straight. Uh, leg room though is abundant. You can see that uh, I have plenty of room between my knees and the back of that front seat. And I keep that front seat pushed back a pretty good distance, so this is nice. Uh, not a whole lot of amenities back here. You know, you just have your standard window controls and door locks uh, on the doors. You do have some power ports and a center armrest for the front seat passengers. So back here you have two dedicated vents, heated seat controls for your passengers. That's pretty impressive. Looks like a USB port that's behind a little bit of a lip or a shield. Uh, and then you have another storage area right here. It looks like someone left me, let's see, pretty nice looking pen. And then, I don't know what this thing is. Well, it's not a piece of candy. It looks like some sort of toy. Anyway, there's, oh, look at that. It lights up. Anyway, there's always weird stuff in these rental cars. But this is nice. Good place to keep a, uh, a cell phone or maybe a small tablet. You also get, I never know what to call these. I'm going to call it a little pocket on the back of both of the seats so you can keep some other odds and ends in there. Let's take a look. One of my favorite things to check out back here, and that's the car seat anchors. If you'll notice, you can see them even without manipulating the seats, and I think that's a good sign. That means that these are not real deep, they're easy to access, so you should be able to hook up a car seat fairly, fairly easily back here. Looks like you also get a center armrest back here. Let's fold it down. Comes with uh, two cup holders and then another nice storage spot that's probably perfect for a cell phone. This actually looks, I don't know if you can tell, but it looks a little, a little short. A little small, but uh, still nice to have back here. And then let's close things out by opening up the sunroof so you can kind of get a feel for what it looks like when you're sitting in the back seat. It's also worth noting that these back seats do recline. You just have to pull up on this little tab right here that's tucked into the seat cushions push back kind of gently and then you can recline the seats at a fairly comfortable distance. It's actually pretty comfortable back here when you manipulate the seats a little bit. You can also pull up on the same tab to fold these seats forward. They just kind of collapse all on their own and then you open up the back even more so that you can take advantage of all the storage space in the Murano. Alright, so let's close things out by jumping back in the car and hitting the button to open up the hatch. As you can see, you get quite a bit of stuff back here. It's actually a nice, large, rectangular shape that, uh, well, I'm kind of jealous of. It's also worth mentioning that you get a spare tire that's located underneath the floor of this area. And there are two controls on either side of the vehicle. They're kind of plastic latches that if you pull up on, it'll actually collapse those uh, back seats for you automatically. They're really convenient to have. Anyway, so that's pretty much everything end-to-end -end on the 2018 Nissan Murano SL with all-wheel drive. I was lucky enough to have this car for uh, three days. I put a ton of miles on it. And I have to say, for my first experience with the Murano, I was pretty impressed. I like this car quite a bit. So it'll be no surprise to you that I'm going to give this one five stars. Besides the center console being a little bit boring, really there's nothing I can complain about about the Murano. I love this vehicle and I would gladly, gladly rent it again. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you join me next time when I rent my 100th rental car. I'll see you then.